Hi guys, this is Tim Masso. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, I want to discuss specifically the function of the second generation Omega Speedmaster Professional X33. This is the reference known as the 3291, but the 3290, the original, is functionally identical. Now we're going to take a brief tour of the caliber 1666, which was exclusive to this family of watches and remains quite special in as much as it can do an awful lot if you know how to use it. Now of course, compared to the original Speedmaster Professional, we are talking a tremendous amount of capability, but also a more complicated interface than classical chronograph and mechanical horology fans might be comfortable with. So I'm going to go through the functions of the watch and how to manipulate them so you can get the most out of this burgeoning collectible. Now of course the watch features both analog and digital displays. And right now I have them synced up so that you can see the time in a digital format, but you can also see it in an analog format. The best thing to do is just start with what we can accomplish without changing the display. You can go to the backlight function, which I'm going to show you right now. And I'm not going to go to full dark because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. But in any of the display modes, as long as you're not in a setting mode, you can hold the pusher down at 8 o'clock. And you can see the duration of the backlight. You'll also note that there is conventional Luminova on the dial, so even without activating the blacklight, you will have a purchase on the time, but you'll have to use the backlight specifically to find the other readings, such as countdown time, mission elapsed time, universal time, or your second time zone, and we'll go through all of those in a moment. Let me bring back my bounty of light. Okay. The other function that you can access without actually going into the other crown actuated cyclic functions is to go straight to your mission elapsed time. Now mission elapsed time is something that you can you can actually set and then start so it can be used as a sort of count up timer but at the same time you can also specify how many hours minutes and seconds are on the clock when mission elapsed time starts and again that's the pusher up at 10 o'clock. Now, with the crown itself, and you'll note this is the second generation X33, the crown, originally a conventional horizontally knurled crown, for the second generation watch, which came out in 2001, the first generation came out in 98, but you have this honeycomb baster shaped device that emphasizes the fact that it's not really designed to be turned, it's designed to be pushed in or pulled out. So let's see what happens when I pull it out again. We're on the time screen. Okay, now it asks me, do I want to go on? We're in a setting mode. I press the pusher at two. Yes, I do. And now using that pusher, I can cycle through the different facets of the display. Hours, seconds, minutes. You can set this very precisely. And you'll note that the pusher at 10 o'clock merely backs up the selection. So if I jump all the way forward to hours, I can jump back to seconds using the pusher at 10 o'clock. Now, here's the other thing. Let's go up to hours. The setting functions are actuated through the pushers at 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock. So let's, let's add some time. You can see how the analog display reacts immediately. Let's jump back. Okay, the analog display jumps back just like that. It's very simple, they're always coordinated, and all you have to do is pull the crown out to the setting position, and then you can start manipulating the time as displayed. Let's push the crown back in. Now, every time I push the crown, I cycle to a different function of the watch. Here you can see the complete calendar. You have the day, the date, the month, and the year. And of course, if I pull the crown out, I enter the setting function, then I can use these two toggles, to select which of the displays I want to change and these two toggles to actually manipulate them up or down. Let's continue on our tour. Okay, you see there is an alarm and this is the first of several. The alarm on this watch is piercingly loud. It's designed for actual aviation use. Now you can see the time of day as set. That is going to be an alarm that's keyed to your local time. That is your primary time zone, the one that we saw in that previous time display and the one displayed centrally with the analog hands. That's what's keyed to this alarm. Of course, pull the crown out, you enter the setting mode, then you can toggle between the different hours, minutes, and seconds or rather just hours and minutes in this display, and you can adjust them upward or downward. Moving on, 
You can see there is the mission elapsed time display. This is another way to reach it. You don't just have to use the toggle at 10 o'clock when you're in the time display. Now, again, pull out the crown. I can manipulate and change that display. Uh, okay, this is the mission elapsed time alarm. So if you have a specific time elapsed within that mission and it can be set to hours, minutes, seconds, even days out, it will sound the alarm and it will be a series of alarms to make sure you don't miss that particular milestone. So mission elapsed time sets the alarm with respect to a specific point in your mission elapsed time cycle. Continuing on, you can see universal time. This is our second time zone. This can be used one of two ways. It can be used as a AM PM indicator for the time at center. If you prefer to just look at analog time hands alone, it can be used to set to universal time proper, which again is either going to be universal time or GMT, or it can be used as a second time zone distinct from universal time or GMT. If you simply want to have two time displays to reference far flung business associates, family, traveling friends, this second time zone is useful for that. Again, pull the crown out and you move into a setting mode where you can reset this. Let's press again, continue our cycle. Now what you're looking at is a universal time alarm. So this sets the alarm with respect to universal time. So again, if a certain point in universal time, whether it's 1600, 1300, 1551 is reached, at that point the universal time alarm, again pull the crown out in this particular screen and you'll set that universal time alarm. The universal time alarm sounds with respect to that previous screen we saw, your second time zone. Pressing the crown again, now you see this is, this is countdown time. You can set it the same way you set the others by pulling the crown out and then using the toggles to select the display and select hours, minutes, and seconds. What this does is it activates an alarm once your countdown time is reached. So let's say you need to cook something for 22 minutes and 30 seconds. You can set the countdown timer to 22 minutes and 30 seconds and then you start it. So again, pull the crown out to set it and then you just sort of operate it like a conventional chronograph. The pusher at 2 o'clock starts the countdown. You see it is very loud and repetitive. Now I can push that crown to stop it and I may have to stop it again. There we go. So I push that crown to stop the alarm, I push that crown to stop the counter because it continues into negative territory, and then I push the crown at 4 o'clock like a conventional chronograph to reset it. Uh, continuing through, you see that there is a chronograph, and this one truly does work like a conventional chronograph. You press the plunger at 2 o'clock, you're starting the count now, press it to stop, Hold it 4 o'clock to reset. Very simple. This is possibly the most intuitive and conventional operation that you will perform on any of the sub-functions or sub-routines of this watch. Now continuing through, we find our way back at the beginning of the tutorial. You can see the time as displayed. This is the analog time matching the digital time. And of course we have our backlight. We can switch to mission elapsed time at any time by pressing the plunger at 10 o'clock and we can jump right back. There is a bi-directional rotating bezel. Again, there is conventional luminova loom. There is an end of life indicator that will let you know when the watch is running low on battery power. The movement is an exclusive caliber 1666, so you won't see it on any other Omega or Swatch Group products. So this tutorial applies exclusively to this extraordinary watch and the Generation 1 variant of the X33 that preceded it. Please note that for the Z33 and the Skywalker, the contemporary X33 descendants, the functional apparatus, routines, subroutines, and control procedure are very different and much more complicated. But if you're getting into the world of X33s, you can't do any better than the original, in this case, the Gen 2. See it and purchase it on our website or email Tim at Watch You Want with any functional questions you may have.